Okay, so this is going to be very different from what has been seen before. This is a Dyson Big Ball Synetic. And this was traded in here because basically um, the owners had a pretty large Labrador and the hair was completely clogging the nozzle basically every time they used it. They brought it in here, I diagnosed it, um, and there really wasn't anything particularly wrong with the machine itself um, other than just the pretty narrow air path. Um, which is normally sectioned off by a divider, if you've ever seen it, in the machine itself in the nozzle. So they ended up trading it in, but uh, what I figured would be interesting to do is to tear this canister apart and show what's left behind inside it and what's left behind inside the never-clogging cyclones and in the HEPA filters, um, because they're the only filters on this machine. So what I'm going to do is grab the canister off uh, along with the uh, remove the clear section of the bin, set the machine aside, and be right back with you to tear this whole thing down. So I am doing a test run all this, so please bear with me if uh, not everything is lined up or you don't have the best views, but um, I figured I'd start. There's a ton of dust and pet hair wrapped around the cyclone shroud, so we'll start by just pulling that off. And then I'm going to get in here. I think these are Torx 8 screws underneath, so let's see. Now, these are actually pretty insanely small screws, if that will even focus. They are Torx 8, according to what I have in my iFixit kit, um, because we actually don't have the correct size driver bits for this here. So, we're just going to get all of these out. And then once that's out, next step is pretty much just slide the shroud off. And we've already got a ton, ton of dirt. And everything built up. And this machine is probably, from what I remember the owner saying, about less than a year old. So it's not very old all in. You'll have a gasket that either pulls off or breaks, as in this case. And then from there, you've got more screw holes right in there. So I'll get those out and be back. Okay, so to anyone following along, um, just so you note, if you are trying to take one of these apart yourself, all of the screws, um, both that hold the shroud in and that hold this piece of the cyclone in, are all exactly the same size. So there's no sorting. You can't put them back in the wrong spots. One thing to make sure of, um, the screws that we're taking out now that are hidden in these alcoves constantly end up hidden by dust. When you pull on this piece, it should slide completely freely. There should be very little resistance. So if you are getting resistance, uh, don't pull. You might break it because you might have left a screw behind. So now that this piece is out, we get even more fine dust and dirt and other assorted niceties. And now you are a lot farther into kind of the of the canal. 
magnetic cyclone machines. So, just pull. There's nothing else from there. Um, basically, the screws that hold this in are also what hold this in. There is a seal around the top that is not actually meant to be broken. These really aren't designed to be taken apart um, repeatedly and put back together, which is part of why the design is so bad. Um, so the other thing about this dust, not only will it reduce performance as it builds up and blocks like this with very fine stuff, um, but if you've got pets, you're going to have odors. Even if you don't have pets, you may still have a pretty stale odor in there. So pretty much the next thing that you're on to from there is the cyclone array itself with the rubber oscillating tips that are self-cleaning and non-clogging, although you can see that doesn't necessarily live up to its name. So I'm going to vacuum as much of this off as I can so we can see the screws and how they're all set up and aligned and be back. Now, one thing to note when anyone is taking this apart, only take it down and clean it as far and as intensively as you are comfortable with. Uh, I'll pretty much take the whole thing apart uh, because I'm putting it in the sink and these don't really dry well if there's any pieces that can still trap water uh, that are together. So basically the next thing that you're going to be looking at if the camera will focus is there will be a ring of again exposed torque screws around here and we'll loosen those up really quick. I'll show you exactly what that loosens, what comes out, and uh, where we move on next. Okay so entire ring of screws is out and basically what you're going to be looking at is now having two halves apart. Now what you will want to take out is the spring for the release and preferably not drop it on the floor and lose it like I just did. It will also have to be twisted in in a very specific way to maintain tension when you do go to put it back in. Otherwise um, Basically, what you can do is you can separate these layers to, again, give them a thorough wash and make sure they dry properly. And then what you get into next from there is pretty much the, the last really round, round of these you're going to come across as far as screws go. So you'll have them on the outer edge all the way around here if that will focus properly and the camera will show you there's not a lot of light. Um, some of them are pretty well hidden in there. Again, same thing with this section as before. All screws are the same size so there's no real sorting needed and it doesn't matter what order they go back in. Okay, so another fun rule of thumb make sure you have proper tools to do this. So, as I said before, this is Torx 8, uh, and I'm using a small interchangeable Torx 8 bit from an iFixit set. Now, these are relatively deep and tight cavities on this part of the canister that hold the screws inside. So this doesn't really reach on its own with the normal iFixit driver or the extensions. So what I ended up having to do, uh, not only I should rephrase that, it's not that it won't reach with the extensions, they won't actually fit down in the cavities. This is the only one that will narrowly fit and you have to put a bit of force behind it. Uh, it's also not really long enough so what I ended up having to do is hold it part way out of my cordless drill and just clamp onto it, get it locked in, and go. So once you do get all those unscrewed, they won't come out necessarily on their own, and that's not really too much of a worry. What you'll want to do is just get right down into these holes here, a small Torx bit, just tap them gently, and they should pop out the other side set these aside they are slightly longer than the others from what I'm seeing 
not really much that I would sweat it too much if you mix them up. There are only a few threads depth different, so it's not very much, but they are different. So I'll get those popped out, work on taking these on the top out, and then that's pretty much everything here. Now, all screws on the top are, again, same size. So once you take out these around the outer edge, this top will actually remove from the rest of your cyclone assembly there. And then once you take out these four screws in the center ring, this will pop out right here. And this is pretty much as far as this will disassemble. Um, you can pull these pink covers off, whatever you would call them, they're, they're just foam. Uh, pull those off to really wash and separate the layers, but otherwise you're down to the basic canister core right there. There's not really anything else that you can take apart easily or without destroying it that's really even meant to take apart. Um, from what I remember, the canister variants of these are a little bit more complicated in the way they're set up and the way things come apart. They're a little bit more difficult to put back together, so you definitely would want uh, to see a separate video if that's what you're trying to attempt. This is mainly just geared towards the upright, but this is what builds up and stays behind. This is what causes odors, can reduce airflow, and anything that isn't trapped in here pretty much goes straight through to your motor. There's no filter before it, and then it'll get trapped in your HEPA filter. So I'm going to dump all this in the sink and we'll wash it up and see how it comes out. And then we'll take a look at that HEPA filter as well and see exactly what's going on with that. All right, so apologies for the lighting. This is the basement, so there's not much we can do about that. Um, but pretty much from here, this is about the easiest part of the job of doing this. Now, again, like I said earlier, this is all down to personal preference and comfort with how you're going to do this and where you're going to do this. So if you can, um, I would say take this apart either outside or in your garage or in a workspace. It's definitely not something you want to do on your kitchen table. Let's put it that way. Uh, if you've got a utility uh, sink just like this, that's pretty much the best place to do it. And there's really nothing special about cleaning these up. Basically, all you're going to do, um, get some hot water, toss them in, use something general purpose cleaner, Lysol, uh, even dish soap, I would imagine, would be completely fine. Just something that's going to clean and kill odors, ideally. So we leave this to sit in Lysol to soak for a while to not only make sure that all the dirt is broken down and it's sanitized, but that... It either doesn't have a scent at all, or the only scent it carries is whatever it's being cleaned in. So, that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, so a bit more up close and personal for this part. This is the access for the two exhaust HEPA filters. So if you are not using a cordless drill right now or any kind of powered tool, this is where you might want to start. These two screws, while they are just normal Phillips head screws, which is about some of the only ones on the machine like that, they are the longest screws. So once you pull those out, these wheels, basically the side covers and vents, just pull straight off on each side. And you've got a HEPA filter assembly, again, held into the body with Phillips head screws. I believe there are three on each one. So I'll pull those out on each and we'll take a look at the side that is actually getting exhaust from the motor. Okay, so there are actually two extra screws in there that uh, I had forgotten about. They hide right in there. 
otherwise they're all the same size screws from either side. They are shorter than the ones that hold the balls in, however. And this actually is a lot cleaner than what I was expecting. It's a little bit disappointing looking at some of the, the hair and fibers around it, but I'm not sure that that's actually from the exhaust. It's definitely a lot better than some of the other ones I've looked at. And, I mean, there is quite a bit of dust in there, but actually it looks like, when I look at that on my finger, most of it is carbon dust. So I'm going to see if we can crack open these casings and get a better look. So, Dyson, in their infinite wisdom, uh, the other cover pulls off the side that's not exposed directly to the motor. Now, theoretically, you could get the side possibly, that's exposed to the motor off by removing these clips, but the whole thing is sealed and I really don't feel like destroying the filter by trying to open it. The closer I look, it does look like, and I have no idea if the camera is going to pick it up or even focus this close, but it does look like there is some pet hair that's made it past the cyclones and into the filter, and the most of, of what can be seen on the surface seems to be carbon dust, but at the same time, this opposite side was just filled. I've already wiped some of it off, some of it off, but was just filled with very gritty, fine dust. I don't know if that's being knocked through the slats in here, and then the airflow blows it into crevices or what. Um, either way, it's it's not the most brilliant setup or design, so I'll make more videos to come once it's all dried and back together and everything like that. I will show what the, the filthy water looks like when I rinse everything out from the canister in the final bit. But for now, that's everything. This machine also has dog hair in it in the motor intake, and I don't know if this will focus, but uh, a little bit of grit, something sandy of some kind stuck down in the motor inlet as well. So, clearly the uh, cyclone system is working perfectly. Alright, so there are all the parts of the canister and the rest of the machine drying, and water basically looks like Nesquik, I guess you could say. Very dark and murky. I'm not going to drown it because, or drain it because I've actually got another machine to wash in here, but yeah, that's what that looks like and how much dirt came out of those.